Welcome to Botech Labs, where tonight we're going to take a look at an old piece of PC hardware given to me by a coworker, thanks Agent Price. That piece of hardware is this bad boy, an NEC 4x4 multi-spin drive. This was manufactured back in 1996. Uh, it is IDE, of course. And what was so cool about it is it lets you load four discs inside the drive with a push of a button. Uh, it's all slot fed, no tray. And then when you wanted to swap discs, you could just hit the button and it would load to another disc. This was really handy back in the day because a lot of games were coming on, you know, three, four, five disc sets. We had things like Phantasmagoria, which were just ridiculous for the amount of discs that they required. Um, and every game that you played did require the disc in the drive. That was the DRM back in the day. So, you know, no Steam, no downloaded games, that kind of thing. It all had to have the physical disc to operate. So this saved you from swapping discs in and out. The speeds on this aren't the greatest. It is only four speed CD-ROM, which is like 650 kilobytes per second, very slow uh, by today's standards or later optical drives, but it got the job done and was pretty cool. I've always wanted to actually get my hands on one of these, never had one growing up, um, and I've always been curious how they work. So we're gonna tear the lid off, give it a good cleaning, because I'm not sure, I haven't even powdered up to see if it functions yet. But we'll give it a good cleaning first, uh, make sure there's no bits laying around or, you know, it's about to explode. And then we'll install it in the old uh, DOS 622 Win98 dual boot machine and um, see how it actually functions with a few games. So that'd be kind of cool. So yeah, let's, uh, let's tear into this thing and see what we're dealing with. Looks like it'll be pretty easy to take apart, just a couple of screws. Um, and I'm not sure how the faceplate pops off, because normally with a CD tray, uh, you can just pull it off. But this is a little more complicated. But um, let's actually plug it into power first and just see if it boots up and if the buttons function. That way we know if we're dealing with a lost cause or not here. So I'll just hook it up to the lab supply. It makes a little bit of noise, but nothing too gross. So let's give it a shot. All right. And... Uh, We'll just throw in a appropriate game disc here. Very nice, you get the little LED for slot one. Let's feed it another. And there's slot two, beautiful. And then we'll try recover from slot one. Nice, slot two. And there we have it. So, no problem there. It seems to operate correctly. So, uh, let's pull it apart to see if it needs a cleaning or not, and then uh, see how it works. And here's the inside of the drive. This is about as far as I'm willing to tear into it. There's a lot of C-clips and real, real fiddly bits and springs and stuff holding this top plate on. Um, and it seems to work, so I really do want to mess the calibration up or whatnot. Um, otherwise, the top is easy to get off for cleaning. It's just two screws. Faceplate pops off like you would expect. Um, and it's really easy to get at, just to, if you ever need to clean it out. The mechanism here is really cool. It definitely looks different than any other CD-ROM drive you've ever seen. This is the section where the discs are actually stored. You've got a little popper here that moves them up and down. And then these white rails are actually how the disc gets delivered to the back here. It kind of slides along. And then it finds its slot in this black carriage. This whole assembly here actually moves vertically um, and changes the position or which CD is to be loaded. And then it gets pulled along this track up to the front here where you have the actual laser module and the drive motor. Um, so it's pretty, pretty cool. The front of it's pretty standard fare. Um, you've got the switches here for selecting your disc, your audio controls. Um, the only thing that's a little different up front is you've got this little brake sensor here and that's for the slot in the door. Um, the microcontroller opens and closes this at will so it really needs to know whether it's open or not before it can uh, decide what to do with it. Everything is in fantastic shape. It's super clean. All this foam, it hasn't disintegrated. It's still pretty spongy. It's not all sticky and gross as it sometimes gets. Um, all of the felt padding or cotton padding, whatever that is, beautiful shape. So uh, Agent Price really takes care of his gadgets. But um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. I always wondered what these look like inside, and now we know. What I'll do now, I'll power it up um, and show you the drive mechanism in action because it's pretty cool to see it actually doing its thing. All right, let's boot this bad boy up and start feeding it discs. I'll just shut up so you can enjoy the majesty of the mechanism at work. So here we go.
and there we go. That's how it loads up. Pretty slick, right? Now you'll notice it does go to position one um, after you load a disk. No matter what, it'll go back to the last position that was active. Now I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to switch positions here um, because you know if you push say like button three, I'm pretty sure it just ejects position three. It doesn't actually switch to it like so. Um, so that's no good. You can't really use the buttons on the front to select what disk you want. They're really only there for loading and unloading. I did see and find a download for the driver disk for this, um, miraculously. So I'm thinking there's got to be a piece of software that actually does this for you. I did notice in the release notes from NEC's excellent archive website that um, Windows 98 is supposedly supposed to support multi-disk changers natively. I happen to have Windows 98 loaded, so, um, you know, we'll find out. So, what I'll do now is I'll put this guy back together since it seems to work um, beautifully. I don't know how it reads disks yet, but um, we'll install it in the 9862 machine and see how it works and see if we can figure out the software side of it. So, here we go. And here she is, check that beauty out, the genuine Biotech Windows 98.622 test rig. It's got some, uh, you know, sweet ass alien fan grills, those are super mint yo. Racing blue for plus 5 megahertz, nice translucent front. Inside, uh, you know, just the latest and greatest for the time. Got a smoking P2, like a 450 megahertz if I remember right. Uh, Riva TNT2 Ultra, 128 megs of RAM. And actually, the card I built it around, which is a AWV32 that I found in a thrift store, and then I was like, crap, those are awesome, I need to build a Windows 98 machine so I can use it, so why not? Um, currently got one CD-ROM drive, we'll add the second, an 8-gig hard drive, this is the DOS 622 drive, and this is like an 80-gig for Windows 98, or maybe it's a 40, I can't remember. Easiest way to dual boot DOS 622 in Windows is to actually have separate drives and just swap them at boot with boot selection. Slick, right? But yeah, I'll uh, make some room, install the drive here, and uh, we'll give it a test spin. Alright, here we are. So I've got the drive installed and I'm about to start Windows 98 here. I do apologize in advance, I'm shooting this direct from the screen. I don't have um, any good VGA capture mechanisms anymore, so we're just going to have to do it the hard way and hope for the best. So here we go, we're going to start up. The system should start up pretty quick here. It's got a pretty decent drive. There we go. Now you're going to hear the drive is going to start actuating here. And it does this at startup, I assume, to read the volume information off of each disk so that it's prepared, um, you know, to show us the labels of the disk when the system starts up. So it does delay startup a little bit. There we go. And then when we hit up my computer here, you're going to hear it hit the drive up a second time, because it's actually flipping through the disks and reading them one by one. And that's where we're going to get our lovely little flashlight here telling us to just hang on and wait. Um, but it only does this the first time, or if you change disks. So it is a bit cumbersome um, and a bit annoying when you first start the system up while it reads each disk one by one. Um, but, you know, if you don't change disks very often, it seems to cache the information, uh, so you don't really have to swap around too much. So, here we are, um, loaded up. We'll actually click, like, we'll start with our missed disk here. And you'll see, it doesn't actually enumerate the drive as a single unit, it enumerates it as four separate drives for each disk, and then it has the proper labels for each. Um, when you select the drive, double-click to open it or access any data on that drive, that's when it actually swaps in the, or tells the drive to swap disks. The instructions that I had read were correct. Windows 98 actually has support for multiplex drives um, built into the operating system, whereas if you have Windows 95, 311, or DOS, you have to install the drivers and the command line utility in order to switch disks. Um, so there is a command line utility available, and there's a little GUI for like Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. Um, that allows you to swap the disks, but it does show as a single drive um, in those scenarios. But here in Windows 98 we just need to select the disk we want by double clicking. It already has the files table um, cached, so it doesn't have to switch to the disk the very first time we access it. 
but if we go into a folder we haven't gone before there you can hear it swapping again um, it's going to have to swap the disk and then um, spin it back up before it will actually show you the directory contents or let you access the information um, but once the disk is swapped it pops back up and you're, you're ready to go uh, you can see that again too so we'll switch to StarCraft here and hear it swap and we should get the splash screen any second so there you go you get about a 10 or 15 second lag um, switching between discs that's not so bad I can certainly live with that for having four discs loaded up and then you can see again we'll switch over to drive the the second slot and since we have already seen the contents of this directory it doesn't actually have to swap the disk until we open up another another folder that it hasn't seen before then you know it's game on there we go so not bad pretty pretty cool little device um, it'd be definitely interesting to see they do make a seven disc version of this um, you know how long it would take to actually fly through all seven discs during startup I imagine it takes a bit more time um, and it is a much bigger unit but the four disc is very cool fits in the computer and seems to do pretty well I've actually gone through um, done some file copies and stuff and the drive is in very good condition haven't had any read errors or anything like that so pretty happy um, thanks again to Agent Price for giving that to me so I could take a look at it and I uh, hope you enjoyed you know this quick little video just kinda of tearing into an old piece of PC hardware um, so yeah until next time take care